We want to turn now to a new update this morning in the fight to bring WNBA star Brittany Griner, who is on trial in Russia over drug charges, back to U.S. soil. The White House announcing that President Biden spoke to Griner's wife yesterday and told her he is working to bring Brittany home. Greiner was detained in February at a Moscow airport after Russian authorities said they found vape canisters with cannabis oil in her luggage. She could face up to 10 years in prison if convicted on drug smuggling charges under Russian law. This, as the family of Paul Whalen, wrongfully detained since 2018, tells NBC News, they've been asking to meet with the president without success and believe the White House outreach should be the same for all wrongful detainees. NBC chief foreign affairs correspondent Andrea Mitchell has the latest. Overnight, back home in Phoenix, an outpouring of support for Brittany Griner, jailed in Russia for more than four months on drug charges, as her family and teammates vowed to fight for her release. I honestly can't rest until she's home. I'm frustrated that 140 days have passed since my wife has been able to speak to me. Sherelle posting to Instagram, I know BG will be able to find comfort in knowing she has not been forgotten. After a handwritten plea from Brittany Griner to President Biden and a letter from more than 1,100 black women leaders, the president and Vice President Harris called Griner's wife Sherelle Wednesday, promising all possible assistance to bring Brittany home. Griner's head coach, Vanessa Nygaard, hearing the news from us. Do you have any reaction to the president having called Sherelle to know that they've read the letter and that they're going to react and respond? This is great, great news, and we hope to have more progress continue. The two-time Olympic gold medalist had written Mr. Biden two days ago with a desperate appeal. I'm terrified I might be here forever. After Russian authorities say vape cartridges containing cannabis oil were found in her luggage. Griner's friends say her experience in prison has been grueling. We know that this is tough. Um, we also know BG. We know BG is a fierce competitor. She's a fighter. Um, but this situation now, this is weighing on her heavily. Complicating any negotiation for President Biden, tensions between the U.S. and Russia are at their highest point since the Cold War. He's up against Vladimir Putin, and we're at war on behalf of Ukraine against Vladimir Putin. So what hope do you have to get Brittany out? Well, this is the commander in chief. So all of our faith right now is in this president um, to get it done. And we know that he can he can get this done. Well, obviously, a lot of Americans hope uh, that, that that can get done. Let's bring in right now former U.S. ambassador to Russia and NBC News international affairs analyst Mike McFall. And, of course, in uh, the package uh, and in the setup to the package, um, we, we, we've we heard that uh, Brittany's been uh, there for 140 days. Oh, we've also heard that another American, Paul Whelan, has been there for four years uh, and has not heard from the president yet. Um, so the question is, uh, how how do we get both of these Americans out? Because obviously, somebody who's been there for four years, who may not be a basketball star, may not be a gold medalist, obviously his family wants him home just as badly, and obviously they've been enduring it for four years. So what kind of deal can be made to bring both of these Americans home? Well, Joe, I want to add another American to the list. His name is Mark Fogel. He was just sentenced to 14 years in jail for allegedly smuggling drugs into Russia, uh, allegedly using his uh, cover as a former teacher at the Anglo-American school to do that. Uh, I know Mark. He taught my son. He, my son played basketball with his son when I was ambassador. He taught most of the kids at the embassy. He's not a criminal. He's been wrongly detained, in my view, as well. So let's remember all three. Uh, these are not easy things to do. I want to be candid and clear. Uh, the Russians have made it, I think, crystal clear what they want. They want to trade. Uh, they want a guy, his name's Victor Boot. Uh, even when I was ambassador almost a decade ago by now, uh, we were already in discussions about a trade for him. They just recently did a trade, remember, uh, to get Trevor Reed out of jail for a Russian criminal, and now the Russians want to repeat that. So I think that's that's going to be the, the, the deal at hand, and it'll be a tough call for the Biden administration to try to do that or not.
So Ambassador Victor Boot, also known as the Merchant of Death for his widespread international uh, crimes, they're drawing an equivalence between him and Brittany Griner, who was found with some vape cartridges in her luggage at an airport in Moscow. I'm curious because you have so much experience trying to navigate these things, what it's like for someone like Brittany Griner inside a Russian prison. We know that the trials in that court usually almost always end up in conviction, but like, what's it been like for her for the last four months? Well, first, I'm glad you underscored. Victor Boot is a real criminal who did really awful things and is rightly sitting in prison. Uh, Brittany Griner is not. Uh, and that's why it's such a hard trade uh, to, to, to think about. I just think the Americans uh, in, involved in these negotiations have to think about what's best for Americans, not what's the right principle here. Boot's been in jail for a decade. Is it really worth another decade of his time versus getting these Americans out? Uh, in terms of the conditions, they're horrible, just exactly what you would expect. Mm -hmm. uh, I've visited Russian prisons before when I was a U.S. government official. Uh, it is not a place that anybody wants to be. It's not a place any Russians want to be either, by the way. Horrible conditions. Um, and that, that, that's why uh, it's a desperate situation to try to get these Americans out. Ambassador, uh, FBI Director Christopher Wray issued his starkest warning yet about the national security threat China poses to the West. Speaking alongside his British counterpart in London, Wray said the Chinese government poses an even more serious threat to Western businesses than even many sophisticated business people realize. Wray also raised the possibility that China may be inching closer to invading Taiwan. Not long after the two officials spoke, the U.S. National Counterintelligence and Security Center made, a, made public an unclassified bulletin warning of a broad effort by China to influence state and local government officials in the U.S. The Chinese embassy in Washington did not respond to a request for comment. What do you make of this? I know this is absolutely in your realm of expertise. Um, how seriously should we take these warnings and what should the United States be doing? So these warnings we've been talking about for years, at least in my world, mm -hmm. people that think about these threats from China and Russia, both domestically and internationally, the threats towards Taiwan, of course. Uh, what I see happening here is an innovation from the Biden administration, something we saw before Russia, before Putin invaded Ukraine, which is declassifying information to warn the American people, to warn American businesses about what is happening. And I think it's fantastic. I think that we need to know what they're doing so that we can be vigilant. Um, and, and we don't have to overreact. We don't want to return to the Cold War and, and accusing every American that talks to every Chinese uh, business uh, as, as being a traitor. That would be a mistake from the Cold War we don't want to repeat. But what we do want to do is know what their game plans are, know that they're trying to steal our technology, know that they're trying to influence public opinion here in our country so that we can combat it. So I applaud what the Biden administration is doing. Declass classifying information that we used to not declassify. Mr. Ambassador, I'm wondering, are, are we asleep at the wheel uh, when it comes to China? Are, are, we far, are, are we far too blasé about the security risk? I, because I keep hearing government officials offering warnings. Uh, there were warnings under the Trump administration about TikTok this past week. Uh, you had the FCC commissioner uh, asking Google and Apple to remove TikTok uh, from their stores. And this is what Brendan Carr wrote. He said, TikTok's not just another video app. That's the sheep's closing, clothing. It harvests swaths of sensitive data that new reports show are being accessed in Beijing. And, of course, it's not just TikTok. It's not just this app. Uh, it, it's other electronics. It's cell phones. It's, 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 uh, it seems to be one technology after another. Are we are, are we just letting uh, the Communist Chinese Party uh, unknowingly into our homes? Well, I don't think the Biden administration is asleep at the wheel. I think they're very focused on the China threat. Uh, they have a giant team that they put together under Kurt Campbell at the NSC. At the right, National right. Security no, no, no. I, I'm talking more about Americans. Like I said, the Trump administration yeah. issued the warnings. The Biden administration issued the warnings. We're all looking at Russia right now. Uh, I'm just wondering whether we Americans are the ones who are asleep right now, even as our governments are warning us. 
Well, I'm not asleep at the wheel, let's be clear, and I'm an American, which is to say, and I'm glad we're talking about it, Joe. We're, every, as Americans wake up to see you, we're talking about it. And that is the good news. That's what I'm trying to say, right? Christopher Ray, they decided to release this information. By the way, doing it with our British counterparts, I think was very smart as well. And I think Americans need more information about what the Chinese are doing. Let's do it in a democratic way, right? Let's not repress people. Let's tell them what's going on as a way for us to be more vigilant. So good move today. And I hope there'll be many more moves like this in the future.